hello guys welcome back or uh, today in this video tutorial I will be taking care of a new sensor that is ADXL345 now let's have a look over the website that is control everything.com and here we have to search for this particular sensor as you can see and here we go and let's see what's it specifically uh, as you can see it's a 3-axis accelerometer and these are some of its more prominent features which you can see also you can have the ability to purchase from this uh, as you can see add to cart is here further in this video tutorial I will be interfacing and displaying the working of the sensor ADXL345 with a particle photon and for that I require a code and let's go to resource tab and here comes the particle code sample now you can download this code sample as zip file from here and you can also have the code from github.com and the repository there is control everything community well let's proceed further and see what hardware connections we need coming to the hardware setup first of all the requirement is of a particle photon which you can see on my screen and this here is an i2c shield it's available on the website controleverything.com and the real reason we are using this shield is to make connections with other i2c devices and a lot easier so for that gently place the particle photon over the i2c shield and we are done Next we require our sensor that is the accelerometer ADXL345 and this here is a connecting cable. Make the connection on the sensor and the cable and make sure that the brown wire of the cable should be connected to the ground terminal of the sensor and for the same reason to the I2C sheet. Now the last part is to provide uh, the power and for that we require a micro USB cable just like this and gently insert it over this power jack. Now we are done with all the connections what we require is to look over the particle code and let's interface it with that. Well for the interfacing part first of all we have to log into github.com and then we have to search for the repository that is control everything community and then here we have to search for the sensor that is ADXL345 and here we are and this is the particle code. Let's have a look over the instructions first of all. In this we have to first of all log in to a particle photon and set up the device and the steps are provided on this very link. You can notice uh, all the relevant information and do it carefully. After that you can have you have to download or get pull the code and on the online ID you have to copy the code and this is the online ID where you have to paste the code and then save it just here. After that the last step is to verify and flash the code as you can see on the particle photon and the code output will be displayed in the logs at dashboard and open up this dashboard dashboard dot particle and let's see what we got here the results will be here uh, now get back to the code as you can see it's a particle code dot ino is the extension of the file you observe in the code that we have to include application dot h and spark wiring itc dot h header files and we have to define the address of the sensor that is 0x F3. We have initialized some variables here and some also here. In the void setup, we have to initialize I2C communication as master and serial communication with the baud rate equal to 9600. Coming to the writing section part, we are going to select bandwidth rate register having address 0x2C and we are going to send the command for output data rate equal to 100 hertz that is 0x0A. Then we are going to select power control register 0x2D and we are going to send the command for select auto sleep disable that is 0x08. In the last writing section part we are going to select data format register 0x31 and we are going to send the command for selection of full resolution that is plus minus 2G. After that it is 0x08. Then we have a delay of 300 millisecond and the void loop function there is a for loop which runs for 6 times and we are going to select the data register having address 50 plus i which is the decimal equivalent and then we are requesting and reading 6 bytes of data for the acceleration x, y and z perpendicular axis. As you can see here comes the conversion of the data which is according to the details provided in the data sheet and at the very end of our code we have the output to be displayed on the dashboard which you can see as the acceleration in x, y and z perpendicular axis and these are the raw values. So this is how the code is. Now let's have a look over the working. Now for the working environment, the first step is to copy this entire code of the particle as you can see on my screen. And after that we have to open up the build uh, which is the ID here. And here we have to create 
a new file and then we have to paste the entire code we have just copied just here we have to paste the entire code as you can see and here adxl345 will be the name of the sensor and then we have to save it after that we have to verify and compile the code it's good and then we have to flash the code and while flashing the code we have to check for the magenta flash which is the confirmation of good to go to code and as you can see we have the successful flash and the notification is here now open up the dashboard link which will have the output details on the screen and as you can see we have the acceleration for all three perpendicular axes that are the x y and z the values are almost constant which means there is no motion regarding the sensor but when I try to move the sensor you can notice the changes in the values regarding the acceleration for three perpendicular axes as you can see the changes are there and clearly visible onto the screen so this is how the sensor works now what do we require is to have a look over the benefits and the applications regarding this sensor the ADXL345 is a small thin low power 3 axis accelerometer with high resolution measurement up to 16 plus minus 16 G digital output data is formatted as 16 bit 2's complement and is accessible through either a SPI 3 or 4 wire or an I2C digital interface it measures the static acceleration of gravity in tilt sensing applications as well as dynamic acceleration resulting from motion or shock. So these features make it very useful for wide range of applications such as handsets, medical instrumentation, gaming and pointing devices, personal navigation devices, fitness equipment and a lot more. This sensor can be purchased from the website controleverything.com and you can also get the code from there. Go to resource tab and you can download the code as a zip file. You can also have the code from github.com and the repository there is control everything community. In the end, I hope you enjoyed this video and you understood and in case if you have any queries, you can reach us on controleverything.com and you can post your comments on the community page. For blogs and articles which are relevant to this sensor or video, you can go to instructables.com and if you want to subscribe more video tutorials just like this go to our youtube channel in the end i hope you enjoyed this video and have a good one yourself thanks a lot for watching